Hi, me again. And welcome back to another Excel training video. And we're going to be looking at data validation today. So let's dive straight in. Um, now, what most people use data validation for is creating drop down menus. So that's what we'll look at first of all. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to choose some data validation. And it's on the data ribbon. And the validation, data validation. And we're going to allow a list of information to be put in from here. And for our source, we can click in there. And I'll show you a couple of ways of doing this. We can click in our source and then click and drag down on the screen wherever we are. Now, that's actually just changed it automatically into the word types. And the reason is because that particular selection I've renamed as types over here. So that's the types of membership. And you'll see how that's, when I select that, it automatically changes the types. The other way of doing it is when I start typing, um, if I just put the equals and then F3, I get my named lists or my names coming up and I can just double click on types there and it will put it in. And that is exactly the same thing. What happens now is I get a drop down list and I can choose different membership types here. Yep, just to see how it works. now. If I double click on there and fill down, it changes them all into life. So we don't want to do that. Um, what we can do is copy it, and then when we select the remainder, what we're going to do is we're going to paste, but not paste any old paste. We're going to paste special. And the thing we're going to paste is the validation. So it's that one there, and click OK. Now, they all stay the same. But now when I click on individual cells, they all now have their drop downs as well. So we could change others into, say, for example, the life membership. OK, I'll just quickly run through that again. Um, so what we could do here is uh, the mail. We could change some of these <coughs> um, and again make them into a drop down menu. Now, if we hover over that and click and drag down, we'll see this is not given a name list here so we couldn't go and choose it from the names list um, I'll just press escape there to take off my previous selection so what I'm going to do is show you a different way of doing the data validation here because if we select one cell do the data validation and then fill it down by doing the copy and paste special that's one way the other way is to apply it to a whole bunch of cells at the same time so if we do the selection here and then we have an active cell at the top can you see how that one's in a different color that means I'm going to do my data validation as if it were for this cell here. Now I have to do something slightly different here because when I choose my list, I need to make sure I refer to these cells here. But because it's not a named list, I need to make sure I lock it. Yeah. If it was a named list, all of these other cells would also refer to that named list. Otherwise, with this one, as it moves down, my list itself will also appear to move down. So this cell down here will in fact be referring to those cells there which are empty so it won't have anything to do its data validation from. So we'll go through a similar procedure here. So we want to allow a list. I'll just move that out of the way. My source is this lot here. But I've got to lock it if it hasn't come in as locked. And you'll notice here it does come in as locked automatically. But if it doesn't, you have to really be careful. You have to press your F4s just to make sure it comes in as locked. Once you've got that, click on OK, and they should be done. So if I click on any of these, they now all have the same kind of drop-down menus. OK, now that's what most people use data validation for. But the other thing I want to show you in this video is how to use data validation to firstly check and also to limit people putting in um, information that's not allowed. Um, based upon certain conditions. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at these tickets here and let's just change a few of them a few of them to yeses. So I'll just change some of them to yeses. Um, and what we've got is we want to restrict these tickets to only the life members. So anybody who's not a life member we're not going to give permission to buy a ticket. Even though they may have asked for the tickets we're going to say no. So here, that life member has asked for a ticket. Here, that life member has not asked for a ticket. We do also want to allow life members 
not to have tickets. So we don't want to force the life members to have tickets, but equally we don't want to allow anybody who's not a life member to have a ticket. And what I've done down here is I've just knocked up a little grid. So we've essentially got four different conditions or four different states. We have life members who do want a ticket, and that's allowed. We have a life member who doesn't want a ticket, and that's also allowed. We have a not life member who wants a ticket, and that one there is the one we want to disallow. And then we have not life members who've not asked for tickets, and that's also fine. So out of those four different states there, or four conditions, there's only one of them that I want to disallow. Now when I'm building my data validation, um, what I actually build is the condition that I want to allow. So if I go into the custom here, um, in here I'd have to build the condition I want to allow. So I'd have to actually build three different conditions with an OR statement. So it would be three times as much work. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to build the one condition there which is not allowed and then simply prefix it with a NOT statement. So it'll be the opposite of the NOT. Yep. So it will be this condition here is not met. In other words, all the other three, any of the other three may be met. And that will be allowed. Just to make life easy for me. Now, another thing to make life easy is if I start typing in here a function, I don't actually get my helpers on the screen. So I'm not going to do it there. I'm going to build myself a helper column, first of all. And I'm just going to call this one allowed. And I'm just going to build it in the first cell here, um, or as if it's in the first cell here, even though I've got the whole lot selected. And bear in mind again, what I need to do from this cell is the cells I'm referring to are D4 and H4. I don't need to lock them because I want them to stay relative as I fill the formula down, as I fill the data validation coming down. And in fact, I'm not going to build this as data validation. I'm just going to build this as a formula. Um, which I want to fill down. So in fact, I'll just build it in the first cell. And this is going to be equals. And what we're going to say is that there equals life. Yeah. But if we have a look down here, the condition that we're building is the not life, yes. So the first part of that is the not life, because both of the life conditions we want to allow. So what we're going to do is we're going to send greater than or equal, uh, so greater than or less than, which is not equal to. And now we're switching into human speak. So we put it into quotes and say life. Now, we're not just going to do that because we've got two different fields that we want to refer to, so two different columns that we want. So the first bit is that there, D4 greater than or equal to life. And the second bit is this column here, have they asked for a ticket? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to wrap that because it's a it's an AND statement. So it's an AND statement. And at the end of that, we now put in the other condition, which is that cell there, H4, which is whether they're asking for tickets or not. And this time it is equal to yes. Um, obviously, I could have done greater than or equal to, uh, sorry, greater than or less than no. Um, but then if I'd put in maybe, it would have come up as allowed, um, which I don't want. I only want the yes as my AND condition here. OK. Now, if I press Enter, that's going to come up as false. Because this condition here, the life, has asked for tickets, is false. That's the wrong way around, because what I've done is I've actually built this state here, because it was easier, remember, to build the exception rather than building all three of these. So what I'm now going to do is I'm simply going to wrap that in a knot. That sounds rather contentious. I'll wrap it in a knot. So I'm going to enclose it in a knot statement. And this should now say true. And if I fill down, it tells me the true, 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 true. So all of these conditions are allowed. These ones down here with the people who are not uh, life members they come up as a false. Now, if I choose that one there and change that to a life member, it automatically changes to true. Now, here's where we cheat. We've built our condition there in our helper cell, and now we copy it. Yeah. 
Having copied that, we now choose these, these cells here, go to the data validation, and we're going to do a custom data validation. And all I do is I simply paste that condition in there and click OK. Now, it hasn't done anything, but what it will do is if I start typing in yes for a non-life member, it will stop me from putting that in. So it will either come up and ask me to retry, or if I cancel, it will go back to the value that was in there before. Um, the other thing that it will do is I can go to highlight or circle any invalid data, and you see how it's showing me just those two there. Now, if I were to change that, well, this one of these to a life. Yeah. It changes now here to true, but it doesn't update the circles. It doesn't always do that. So what we have to do is go back and say clear validation circles and then reapply them to see what is now the invalid data. OK, um, that's another use for data validation. In my mind, a much more useful one rather than just creating drop-down menus. I hope you found that useful. I'm the Adobe Guy, and thank you for listening.